Hello and welcome to another Shadowlands video guide. My name is Barack Rashama and in today's video we will be having a discussion on how to maximize your damage and rotation in Mythic Plus dungeons, as well as throwing in a little bit of tips and tricks in there to go even further beyond. Before we get started, if you are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button for more information and updates for Shadowlands in the future, as well as Elemental Shaman content, and slap the notification bell to receive notifications when I release content. Like the video if you like it, now let's get right into it. Starting off with one of the biggest damage increases you can give yourself in a dungeon going from mob pack to pack is going to be actually pooling Maelstrom resources in anticipation for the next pull. I see so often this practice not being done by many a shaman and it really makes a huge difference in the dungeon and the overall of the dungeon. Consider if the current mobs HP pools are at around like 30% let's say. How long do you have until combat drops? Make sure that you recognize that situation and then decide whether or not you need to start saving your maelstrom and generating it as much as you can in anticipation for the next pull. The way that you start off the next pull with like an earth shock, an earthquake, right? Depending on if you're running echo legendary, having that right away makes a huge damage or a huge difference in your damage to get the ball rolling. A common practice that a lot of shamans and top shamans will do is actually pulling maelstrom before the start of the key using either a turnip punching bag that you'll see in this video right here, or uh, they can actually pull some dungeon mobs in the mythic zero difficulty before they put in the key and start the dungeon. So keep those in mind. This is another big mistake I see players make when it comes to mythic plus. A lot of players will not actually change their rotation on the fly to match the number of mobs that they are facing or the situation that you're given. Quite often you will find yourself fighting a four to five pack of enemies, maybe even more, right? And then halfway, suddenly, suddenly halfway through the pool, um, two of the mobs, two, three of the mobs have died and you're still just casting Chain Lightning and Earthquake. Need You need to be able to read the situation before it's going to happen. Familiarize yourself with the HP pools and values of mobs in the dungeons, and then start to change your rotation mid pull when you notice that some of the mobs are going to be dying soon. You can do this by prepping flame shocks on higher health targets. They're going to be living longer. And then once those lower health targets die, you are already in the uh, three target scenario, let's say. And now you can already start to get those lava bursts going, the lava surge or procs, the lava surge procs are happening, and you continue doing your most optimal damage rotation for the amount of targets that you're facing. Hello there, Baraco Merch here. Here to tell you about Brocko Shama's merchandise available on twitch.tv slash Shama and our fan fiber Twitch page, which Twitch fan fiber page where we sell our merch. You can get your own fucking shaman hoodie, merchandise, t shirts, keep common maelstrom on, and always totem mug. Mm. Yep, Brocko Shama at it again. You mean Brocko Mooch? Who said that? For real though, guys, if you want to go check out my merch, I'll be leaving the link to that in the description down below. Huge shout out to my new patrons over on my Patreon page. They're going to be linked on screen somewhere here. Thank you guys so much for showing your support. If you guys are interested in showing support as well to support the content that I'm doing and just everything that goes into it goes right into the content that I'm producing. I mean, my editor is doing all that fancy new production stuff as well. Follow my twitch.tv slash Baragushama Twitch page, my Twitter as well, my Instagram. All of that is going to be in the description of the video down below. Sell out, yeah. There is also an extra piece of extra, extra awesome information in Mythic Plus, and that is making sure that during your big cooldowns, you are lining up the most value for them possible. This means by using or when you're using Stormkeeper or Storm Elemental, if you're running that talent with an on use trinket like the PVP badge from uh, the, the, the honor vendor that gives straight intellect on use or the soul letting ruby that gives you critical strike from theater of pain. Just to give a couple examples of on use trinkets. If you are in the Necrolord Covenant, you may want to run the Emony Soulbind as every time that you use your Primordial Wave Covenant ability, you are buffing yourself 
and your allies near you by a significant amount for a short duration from the lead by example soulbind ability. So timing is key when using your CDs. Try to compile everything in those short burst windows to get the biggest bang for your buck out of them. All right, now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of the talent section of the video. It should come as no surprise that Echo the Elements is going to be our strongest talent on the level 15 row, as the majority of our damage at the moment is coming out of Lava Burst in a lot of situations. So pretty much run this talent until further notice. Over on row 25, Aftershock is going to be our go-to for dungeons as well as it yields the biggest AOE damage potential increase, as well as having really good synergies with the Echo of the Great Sundering Legendary effect. The free Maelstrom resets are quite big if you get lucky back-to-back -back procs, and Echoing Shock can be used, but would be a slight increase on single target over Aftershock um, when copying Lava Bursts on single targets, and you get a free Earthquake every 30 seconds when you're using it on AoE. Elemental Blast can also be used on Tyrannical Weeks if you need single target, but the net gain on single target, if that's needed in your group, you might as well run Echoing Shock as it would be more useful in the overall of the dungeon because it adds AoE value as well. Let's move over to the 30 row. I pretty much would run Spirit Wolf almost all of the time here as the added movement speed that you get from it's quite valuable as well as the damage reduction could come in handy, but you would end up silencing yourself for the duration of you being needing to be in that damage reduction. Earth Shield can be a alternative, as you can put it on the tank to add some extra healing to your group, or you can put it on yourself if you need the extra healing on your own body. Row 35, Master of the Elements, pretty much is the really useful at the moment, and the beginning of expansions is when it becomes most useful because it's a flat damage increase to your nature spells or frost spells. So, Earthquakes and Stormkeeper, um, Empowered Lightning Bolts and Chain Lightnings, all of that extra damage outweighs the damage that you would get from Liquid Magmatome and Storm Elemental at the moment. Though, in the future, we could see some play coming from Storm Elemental with the um, added situation where we get two Legendaries and we start running Skybreaker's Fiery Demise, possibly to lower the cooldown on Storm Elemental in Dungeons. Over to the level 40 row, Nature's Guardian is pretty much the default choice here as it gives us a added survivability. And Shaman is historically quite squishy, and this honestly just adds a nice little survivability to our kit that we tend to need from time to time. Though, if you think you are skilled enough, Ancestral Guidance can help to um, help the healer out and be a lot more useful throughout the entirety of the key. If you do not need the extra... Um, Personal defensive in Nature's Guardian, even though it is not a cheat death, and you are confident in your survivability skills, Ancestral Guidance, when paired with cooldowns, offensive cooldowns to increase the healing of it, can have sur surprising outcomes as far as how much healing it could actually give out. So it could be very useful in that situation. Level 35, this row has a lot of back and forth for the current state of the season, and depending on what the affixes are, you may want to go with one or the other. Ice Fury is quite valuable in Tyrannical Weeks as it adds that single target and priority target damage increase, but Primal Elementalist gives you increased AoE damage with your Fire Elemental's um, new Meteor ability, as well as your Earth Elemental giving you a new defensive in Hardened Skin. So that's quite handy as well if you need the extra defensive. Ice Fury is more of a challenging talent to play, so I don't recommend using it if you're new to the class. So I would actually recommend majority of the time to run Primal Elementalist in situations where you need that defensive and you need that extra AoE for your uh, Elemental, your Fire Elemental. Over to row 15, or 50. Stormkeeper. Always, 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 always Stormkeeper. Never not use this in dungeons. It's currently, in its current form, it's just far too versatile to argue otherwise. As it brings both increased AoE, Maelstrom generation, single target, priority target damage, and instant cast for added mobility. It is just so good, so versatile. It's a great talent. It should be baseline. All right, moving on. All right, now is the longest section of the video. I'm going to be telling you how you can open up on enemies in AoE scenarios. There are so many ways to do it, as a, your opening sequence can change and vary depending on what your covenant is that you chose, as well as how many procs you're getting from Aftershock or other various things. And I have prepared some opening sequences for you that yield strong burst windows 
assuming that you have chosen the Necrolord's Covenant. But the goal, like I mentioned before in the previous cooldown usage chapter, is to get the biggest bang for your buck when using those offensive cooldowns. So the clock is ticking, and ideally you want to have enough Maelstrom going into the pull to either Earthquake or Earthshock right away, and then start casting your Chain Lightnings and getting ready to do damage. Earthshock, obviously, if you're running the Echo Legendary. Having Stormkeeper available is obviously preferred as well. And on screen, you will see rotations being done on the left using um, the non-legendary, I guess, so not using a legendary. And then on the right would be using the Echoes of the Great Sundering Legendary. You want to pre-cast Fire Elemental and start by applying Flame Shock to higher health target. If you don't have the legendary, this is where you would also drop an Earthquake to start your damage. We are now going to be buying time for Flame Shock to come off cooldown. So your next spell cast will depend on your Maelstrom amounts and talents going into the fight. You now want to build Maelstrom back up to prepare for your burst window. So cast Chain Lightnings until you have just before 60 Maelstrom available, then cast a Lava Burst. This Lava Burst is important later on. Now we want to activate Stormkeeper and then apply Flame Shock to our second target and the fun begins. This is where you're also going to cast Primordial Wave on your third target that does not have a Flame Shock on it and pop all on you trinkets, your your Blood Rage Racials, whatever it is, your Berserking if you're a troll, Blood Fury if you're an orc, right? And drop your Earthquake. This Earthquake is going to be empowered by Master of the Elements thanks to the first Lava Burst that we casted beforehand. Now we cast our first stack of Stormkeeper Empowered Chain Lightning to generate all of our Maelstrom back again and drop another Earthquake. Now want to cast Lava Burst to use up Primordial Wave buff and gain another Master of the Elements buff for our next Earthquake. This, this Lava Burst that you cast, it's okay to hard cast it if you don't have a Lava Surge proc as it's going to hit four times total once on your first cast that you do if it's a hard cast or an instant cast. And then the Primordial Wave buff is going to send out three additional Lava Bursts to each target affected by your Flame Shock, generating a total of 40 Maelstrom. That's a lot of Maelstrom. So depending on overloads, this could also be higher. You should then have enough Maelstrom to immediately drop another Earthquake, and this one's going to be empowered by Master of the Elements, followed by your second Stormkeeper Empowered Chain Lightning Charge, and then another Earthquake, and the ball continues. If you are using the Echoes of the Great Sundering Legendary, you should use your first Maelstrom dump on an Earthshock, like we talked about before, to pocket that Echo of, of uh, Great Sundering buff for later on. Then the rest of your rotation is quite similar with substituting out every Earthquake, or every other Earthquake, excuse me, for an Earthshock to get the buff. The biggest thing that make to make sure that you are doing is getting the Master of the Elements buff for your big Earthquake from the Legendary effect. You'll see that in the video that we're playing now on the right side, where I am buffing with both the Echo of the, of the Great Sundering Legendary and the Master of the Elements buff to big Earthquakes. Continue casting Chain Lightnings and Earthquake slash Earthshocks if you're running the Echo Legendary, and adjust your rotation over for the rest of the fight, depending on the number of enemies that are left over after the opener is done. The opener will slightly differ depending on how much Maelstrom you have going into the pull, and your opening rotation will also need to be adjusted based off of the amount of procs from Aftershock and Tumbling Waves Covenant Conduit. There are going to be times where you can just get an absurd amount of resets and procs where it becomes just really daunting. So what I would recommend is to just practice often so that when this situation happens, you can optimally traverse these moments. If you guys require a more written form of this opener and its different variations depending on how much Maelstrom you are have or you have available going into the pull, I'm going to have them available in my Barocco Guide server channel within my Discord server. I'll be leaving the link to the Discord server down below in the video's description. Uh, if you're interested in a single target or raid environment style guide, stay tuned for the future because that one's coming next and I'll be leaving the link to that guide in the description of this video down below when it is out. Hope that this video was helpful to you guys and that you learned something new from it. Comment down below what your thoughts are and uh, if you like the video, like it, subscribe for more Shaman content and Shadowlands content in the future. And remember, Keep calm and maelstrom on. Bye-bye.